Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. Today we're going to start learning how to use Web3.js. In the past, we've used Web3.js to interact and exploit contracts via smart contract ABIs. Today we'll use Web3.js to start interacting with and monitoring blockchain networks and transactions. This will allow you to start coding your own interactions, such as monitoring on-chain things like DeFi attacks or looking for attack opportunities. To start, you'll need to set up a few things which can easily be installed via apt-get on Linux. For example, Node.js and NPM should be all you need to start. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up my editor and show you the packages I have installed. So all I have installed is .env and that's to read environment variables that we'll use for our Infura keys to connect to the Ethereum network and also Web3, which we'll need to connect to the Ethereum network. So you can just install those pretty easy with npm install web3 or npm install.env. Once those are installed, those should be the only packages you need. And then to connect to the Ethereum network with those Infura uh, environment variables, you'll need to sign up at infura.io, create a project, and grab your keys for that. We're going to use the WebSocket keys on the Ethereum mainnet. Once you created your account and you hop in here, this is what it looks like. All you're gonna do is go to create new project and then select Ethereum, say test or whatever you wanna call it. Once you create that, it gives you your endpoints for mainnet or you can switch to Ropstein, Coven, Rankby, whatever you're actually connecting to. We're actually gonna do the mainnet because monitoring and grabbing data doesn't cost money, only actually running transactions does. So we can do this for free on the mainnet. So what you're gonna do is grab this WSS URL and that's what you're gonna use for your environment variable in the next section. So I'm gonna burn this project now because you guys don't need to be using these keys, you need to make your own. So those are gone. So with that said, let's get started uh, coding up, interacting with the network by grabbing the blocks, which is a very easy program to start. We're gonna code everything from scratch so there's no mystery. So the first thing we're gonna do is hop into an empty JavaScript file I created. And here are the three things we're gonna do. We're gonna access the environment variables in this case, the Infura URL that we were creating in Infura.io to connect through the node to the blockchain, we're going to put that as an environment variable because you shouldn't share out your API key URL that goes to the blockchain. So once we do that, we're gonna use Web3 to connect through that to the blockchain and we're gonna grab the block numbers. So in order to access the environment variables, we need to import the .env from that package.json that you installed with the NPM manager. And we're going to say require .env config, and that will allow us to access those environment variables. If you don't know how to make an environment variable, it's really simple in Linux. Just export, name it whatever you want. So I'm gonna say infura underscore ws for WebSockets. Put an equals and paste in your mainnet URL for WebSockets, which is in your project settings. Once you do that, you should be able to access those environment variables and you'll have that URL to connect with the Web3 object. So to connect with the Web3 object, if you look at the documentation, here's an example. So we're just gonna say Web3, require Web3, and then we're going to connect that to our URL. So in this case, Web3 local host. However, what we wanna do is use a WebSocket provider that we're gonna to subscribe to. So web3.setProvider, new Web3, WebSocket provider. So if we hop back in our text file here, we can say constant Web3, and note that that is uppercase, equals require Web3, and that is lowercase. And then we're gonna say constant web3 lowercase equals new uppercase web3. And now we need to put our URL provider in there. So we're gonna say new web3.providers and use a web 
socket provider. And the WebSocket provider we want to use is from our process.env dot infura underscore ws. So that's accessing the environment variable and the name of the environment variable that we created. Now we have that object we can use to connect through the infura URL to the blockchain and do whatever we want there. In order to grab the block numbers, what we're going to have to do is something called subscribing. We're going to subscribe to something called new block headers, right? So this is all in the documentation. So if you go into the documentation, there's something called web3.eth.subscribe. And what you can do is you can subscribe to various things. For example, pending transactions, which would be like what's in the mempool before they're picked up by a miner and put into a block. We have stuff like new block headers, which would have our block number and other data. We have logs. So what we want to look at is new block headers because all we're going to do right now is grab the block number as a proof of concept that we connected to the blockchain and that we're monitoring things on it. So within here, you can see various examples. So if we hit example, you'll see that we do a web3.eth.subscribe and we're going to subscribe to the new block headers. Once we do that, we're going to do on data, associate that with a block header, and then we can use that block header to do things. Now the JavaScript syntax is kind of crazy. So if none of this makes sense, I would look up on YouTube um, JavaScript asynchronous functions, and it'll roll you through how to use promises, callbacks, asynchronous functions. If you're coming from Python or other languages, a lot of this stuff is crazy. They have like five different ways to do functions. I'm not sure why they're just bored and make up new ways. But um, other than harping on their atrocious syntax, let's actually get in here and code this. I just want to show you this stuff in the documentation so when you're working on your own projects, you know where to go to go up here and maybe search block number, maybe it'll come up in here somewhere, and then you can start using whatever it finds to start coding that, right? So right here it came up web3.eth.subscribe. So that's how we would have found it. So we'll hop back in here and we will code this up. So we're gonna say web3.eth.subscribe. And we're gonna to subscribe to the new headers, right? Just like the documentation, there's nothing secret here. And then we say dot on, and we'll say the data. So once the data comes back from an asynchronous function, so we're gonna do a asynchronous function, so that way it sends it out, waits for it, and when it comes back, we're gonna use an arrow function, and associate that with something called block, and we'll access the things from that block using that block uh, object. So now what we're gonna do is access that block object and just log out the block number. So we're gonna say console.log. And in order to access items within a string from like an object or a variable, you need to use backticks in JavaScript. So we'll say block number, and that's just a string we're making up and we'll put a space there, and then we're gonna use dollar sign, and we have to put whatever we're accessing within those brackets, so we'll say block.number. And once that's all done, we should be able to then reach out to the blockchain, grab the blocks, and print out those block numbers. But one other thing we should do is also check for errors, because if this data doesn't come back and an error comes back, we wanna know what that error is so we can fix our problems. So now what we're gonna do is go dot on again, but instead of saying data, we're gonna say dot on error, right? And we'll do another arrow function and we'll associate that with an error object. Console dot log and we'll log out the error. So now what we have here is we are accessing the environment variables. We're using that environment variable to create a Web3 object with our Infura URL. And once we do that, we're now gonna grab the block numbers 
with that Web3 object we created using the new block headers subscription. Then we're going to access that via this data and associate that with a block object. Then we're going to log out that block and access the number from the block, right? And if we don't get data back, then we're gonna get an error back and we wanna also log that so we know what's going on. So once that's all done, I can save that. And if I didn't make any mistakes, it should work. So if we hop in here and we say node, and I name this starting with a zero, zero. Now there's a block in Ethereum every 15 seconds, roughly. So first block came in, and then 15 seconds later, another block should come in. So there was a delay there, probably because we were grabbing something that already just happened, and then the second one came in quicker. But other than network lag errors, this is subscribed now, and you should be seeing the block numbers that were parsed out. So if I hit Control C on that. Now, what you just did to review was, you know, you connected to the blockchain and you monitored the current blocks and grab the block number. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Now we're gonna start looking at transactions. So hopefully you learned something in here. If you did, like and subscribe and we'll get into some more stuff in the next one.